program. Basically, our focus is on you know the tech, the authentic, effective use of technology in the classroom with students. Um, all that that encompasses. Okay, it's it's it, it sounds so simple, but those of us that somehow get in and work with students and work with colleagues and work with teachers, we know how much how much of a challenge and how you know how much time that requires. So what I wanted to get into is we'll make sure that it doesn't crash. Uh, the PowerPoint's up online, so if you want access to any of this at all, you can write down the, the uh, URL redirect, uh, plus I see a lot of you have iPads and cell phones, you can take a picture of the QR code um, and get into that later. Basically the PowerPoint's up online so you can access it later, no need to take notes, we know all the research that says that it's, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not an effective technique for you to take notes while you're listening or, or trying to pay attention. But they might want the, the website. Yep. The, the it's website. up online. <laughs> you can that down. Take a look at any point. <laughs> take a snapshot. So what we're interested in is that, that right now we're in a huge transition. I mean, think about how much change is occurring as we speak. You guys done jotting that down? I'll go back to that at the end. We're in the middle of a huge transition right now, okay? And so basically what's happening is all of our students are making this transition into this highly uh, technological society, uh, but at the same time as adults, we personally are trying to figure out what our relationship is with technology. And that's a challenge, okay? So think about it. Uh, there's, if, we, if we all look at this in terms of reading and reading comprehension research, because it's a nice common talking point, uh, there's huge changes that are occurring to the reader. This is one of our um, colleagues over at the Ed Department, Suzanne Murphy. That's her bag. That's pretty much what she carries into school every single day. Uh, so she's got, you know, the Atlantic, she's got a, a writing research piece, uh, a PDA, I don't know why she carries that. She keeps that. her passwords in it. Yeah, that's, that <laughs> carries all the passwords for me. She's got an iPad, she has a Kindle, she's got a track phone, because she feels like the track phone uh, doesn't carry as much info. Um, she doesn't want people to know about her, and I said, don't you know what you're doing with these? <laughs> no, don't don't go that. there, Ian. Um, so the changes are occurring to the reader, you know, I mean, many of us, we're trying to decide, can we move away from the textbook and go into the e-reader? You know, are, are you that type of person that needs to see and smell the book, or do you need, or are you ready to make that jump over to an e-reader full time? How do we make those decisions, and think about that when we're supposed to lead students. We're supposed to teach students about the best ways to read and prepare. There are fundamental changes that are occurring to the text. Uh, the, the most, I mean, think about how far text has evolved over time. You know, we think about the, you know, cuneiform tablets, we think about the, you know, printing presses, and now, this is pretty much where we are now. When we sit down and we want to read, we want to communicate, we want to socialize, many of us are pulling out little tablets, we're pulling out computers, you know, I do most of my reading and communicating on this thing here. You know, it's, and tonight when I go teach class, I, I'm amazed at the, at the adults in my classroom that do a lot of their readings for class on the mobile phone. I'll walk around and ask them to read and talk about a, a piece of text, and they're pulling out their cell phones to try and read it on that. It's, it's amazing to me. And so here, here we are, we're trying to lead our students through that huge transition in what it means to be, in what text means to us. Um, the, the, the activity of reading is fundamentally changing. This might be a shock to you, but a lot of our students go online when they have to do their homework. I was amazed to figure that, to find that out. Um, but basically, let's say we have one of our high school students, they have to do, you know, some research on the Scarlet Letter. They'll go out and they'll go into Wikipedia, and most of us and our, and our colleagues, you know, the teachers beat it into our students' heads that Wikipedia is a bad source, so they immediately get out. Uh, they'll go over to Internet Movie Database, they'll go into Dictionary.com and try and look up what, are they, what does Scarlet mean. Uh, then we'll go over to this other website called SparkNotes. Uh, it's a fan favor among many of our students. Uh, many of us probably got through college using SparkNotes. Uh, we can go into primary text and take a look at you know, some of the documents that are out there. One of the very cool things is that a lot of our students are visual learners. So we'll go to images and video. 
and, and, and they'll learn through that medium. Um, I learned through the, I learned that way. You know, if I have to go online and figure out, I was trying to figure out how to, how to fix a computer uh, application the other day. I was working in um, PowerPoint, and I had to help a colleague of ours embed URLs into it that would actually click. Couldn't get it to work. Go online. There's some kid, an 11-year-old kid from, you know, I joke, Peori, Illinois, that's putting up videos <laughs> on how to use PowerPoint and, and do these high-level functioning pieces. Um, so, I mean, this is what's happening is our students are jumping into text and working all around to construct meaning from all these sources of text and, and then use that in your classroom. How are you preparing your kids for this reality? How are you preparing kids for what they're experiencing now? And it's even more complicated, uh, complicated because we are trying to figure out what we feel about it and deal with it. Um, so some of our specifics, it's a six-year certificate in the state of Connecticut. Uh, there are comparables uh, globally. Some states call it a CAGS, a Continued Advanced Grad Studies. Um, there are, there's other terminology for it. Ed, uh, ed Specialist, EDS, is a new one that I heard. Massachusetts uses that. Uh, so just so you know, in terms of transferability, they're all sixth-year degrees, just different names. And we'll go into that yeah. um, a, a little bit later. But it is a six-year certificate, and the name of the program is the specific title of the certificate with the state. We're licensed and accredited. Um, we, our focus is authentic, effective use of technology in all content areas, in all curriculum, in all grade levels with all students. That's pretty broad. Um, some school districts will offer a pay increase uh, if you go through successfully and complete this uh, program. Uh, and also, one other thing that may be interesting to you, uh, we will not have a textbook in the program. The only textbook we'll be using is the iPad. Um, I believe that the iPad is a, a shoddy tool in teaching and learning, uh, but the fact of the matter is our schools are loading up uh, you know, iPads left and right, so we need to figure out how to use it in teaching and learning. So there will not be a textbook. The only thing that you will have to purchase as part of this is an iPad. Everything will be open, it'll be online, all your materials will come out through iTunes U, um, but there will not be another textbook that you need to use for the course, for the program, for the and courses, for the program. And it's quite possible, because this is our inaugural year, uh, at, that, I, that we can swing iPads for the people who register. Um, I, I like Donna, I can't quite promise that yet, but I will work very hard if we have 10 people here who so, say, you know what, they really need an iPad. Uh, so you may not even have to purchase that. Um, and that would be it, 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 something, it, we're making it out, this part up as we go along, so we figure we can just, you know, push it, see how far we can get. So everything's going to be in the iPad, and we're going to try as hard as we can to put them in your hands because you need them. Um, we can't go through all the digital text and tools without providing you with some of the, the mm -hmm. access. Um, so this is a slide with a lot of text on it. So it's the perfect example of PowerPointlessness. Um, basically, it's the the courses in the all of the courses in the sequence for the six-year program. What you know is basically what themes guide our work and our thinking. Uh, this is a, a mix. We try to have a good mix of theory and practice. We think it's very important for you to understand. Um, how you operationalize tech use in the classroom. How do you go in the classroom and use PowerPoint, use you know, a wiki, how do you use these different tools? But, but then at the same time, we approach many of these from a literacy or critical literacy perspective because things are changing. Fundamental, it, people's paradigms about teaching and learning are changing. And we need to empower you to go into a classroom with colleagues or work with others and explain the changes that are happening. This is bigger than going in and using PowerPoint in a different way in the classroom. This is bigger than adding transitions into a PowerPoint, okay? There are fundamental changes here that are occurring. So you'll see uh, foundational pieces, media lit, uh, global lit, critical literacy, research. There is a research component that's involved in this. In our pre-service program, uh, we believe that our teachers need to be healthy, reflective practitioners. That goes double for students that would be in this program. We have adaptive technologies in there, uh, so students with special needs, we can try and figure out ways to assist them with the use of technology. There is an assessment piece in there, uh, an assessment class 
that I think I I know sets us apart from the two summers program, but I love the people in the program, so I can't talk about <laughs> bad about them. And there's a digital portfolio at the end because you're going to want to showcase your work to colleagues in the building. So now how, well, can you actually make this work? So, uh, and I do want to back up something I said. We're only making up part of this as we go along. This is all set to go. We've all approved. The university's ready to have us. But how we get things into your hands and how we make this work for you is, is why we wanted to enter into a particular relationship with one school. And uh, so, because then we can really see what we can do. Uh, so that said, we understand both of us having been uh, middle school teacher, uh, middle and high school English teachers, but any kind of teacher, um, we know that trying to make this work is no small thing for you. Um, we designed it to be a one-year, including two summers program. That's a lot of school in a short period of time. Um, but all the school year classes will be online, and mm -hmm. with two digital symposium weekends to keep you face-to-face -face connected. But for the most part, the vast majority of your work during the school year will be online. But the two summers, and you'll see a schedule in just a moment, um, will be face-to-face -face or hybrid so that you really build a relationship with people um, or hybrid meeting half face to face, half online. So we tried to very much keep in mind that uh, your working professionals whose jobs can take up as much many hours a day as you have. Um, we realized that perhaps we need to have a two year plan, um, which we are which we're ready to do as well, which would encompass two summers, but school year classes would be you you'd do half of them. So essentially it would take you to two years, no, it take you two years rather than one. Um, we really do not want to go any more than that because then technologies change, uh, you have developed relationships and you've developed a cohort more or less of people and we really don't want you to lose that momentum and we think there's something lost in the teaching. So that's why the, at the moment the options would be one year and two years. Uh, cost. Um, when we did research for this program, uh, we realized that as a private school we were more expensive as a uh, tuition uh, credit hour. Uh, than anybody else, at least any of the state schools. So we've negotiated uh, a state school cost for this program for you. Um, so we'll, it, it will be our current rate if you go online for grad programs is 775 a credit hour, but this is 550 a credit hour. You won't see that online, but you can take that to the bank. Literally, that's that is what we've negotiated for this program, and that's equivalent with the state school. So it's still expensive, to be sure, but it's not so expensive that why would you do it? state school. And I've already mentioned the HBR very much working with them. So the way that this breaks down is, Nancy just mentioned, this is the one year sequence. Mm -hmm. What we would do is you'd start off in the summer, you know, with instructional tech, media lit, uh, media tech and learning. Uh, the shaded in, it's a little challenging to see on this. The shaded ones are fully online. The, the white ones are hybrid. So there's a face-to-face -face meeting, but then there's also the online component. Um, and basically, as Nancy said, we bring you in once, uh, we bring you in twice for a weekend for a, a, a digital symposium, basically a conference where we all get together, we have keynote speakers, you can showcase your work. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, while we're here, before we skip ahead, you can see all the course names that we have before. Uh, one of the thing, a couple of the ones that I wanted to highlight is the Adapted Tech class. Uh, there is a component in that. That's the basically students with special needs and our striving readers trying to figure out ways to use technology with them. There is a grant writing component in that class mm -hmm. um, because many of your buildings might not have the supplies that they need that may or may not apply to you. Uh, and what we wanted to do is build in a grant writing piece so that we can research and identify who is funding technology, who is funding access, um, and then help you write grants so when you go back to your building you can try and get the support for your building that you need. Um, also the teaching learning and assessment basically that I believe is also another hallmark of the program. What we do is we look at assessment of online literacies so uh, I was a researcher at UConn we looked at online reading comprehension we try and assess all these different online literacies so that when a student goes online to read, write, socialize, uh, communicate, what are they doing, what are the skills involved, but then also we need to know uh, how to assess using online tools. So those of us that use Google Forms or use SurveyMonkey um, or any one of the online assessment tools, how can you use technology as a formative and summative assessment? Um, and just to, uh, to 
further uh, give note of what, what we like about the program. We really tried, as Ian said earlier, to mix uh, use of tools with critical thinking about those tools. Uh, it's a misnomer that students uh, are digital natives. Uh, they probably know very little compared to what the, the, the general public thinks they know about work, uh, and particularly on uh, liter literacy practices. So uh, we really like that with critical literacy practice, for example, you're looking at issues of power, social inequity between children, um, as well as how do you use this thing and how do you use this thing in my class and this class in math and in English and in history? So we really, we really enjoyed putting the best thinking of all of us together. Um, we're actually fighting over which courses we get to teach uh, because it's, it's, they're all new and, uh, and we're looking forward to working with you to figure out how to do this as teachers. Two other things, this is a uh, partnership between the communications department and education. Uh, so some of the classes will be taught by communications. Two of them. Uh, two of them. The, the nice thing about that is they have a lot of expertise in the field. So when we're talking about, you know, <clears throat> digital media production, you'd be going right to some of the experts in the field to, to learn how to do that. Um, and then the other piece is the global literacy piece. Uh, because put our students online, they can uh, get in trouble any place globally <laughs> immediately. So... Uh, if we were to spread this out over a two-year sequence, um, this is a mock-up that we're, we're thinking about is basically you would start off and you'd have, you know, one of the summer or two of the summer courses this upcoming August. Um, and then over the course of the first year, instead of taking the two classes, you take one at a time. So year one, you take two classes. You take a fall, a winter, and a spring. We have a trimester schedule in the grad school. Um, and then you would have the decision about uh, which of the digital symposium weekends you would attend. Um, we would love it to have you there all the time, but you know if you're spreading this out, then we totally understand. But basically, you'd take one of the courses. The summer you'd wrap around with online content construction, remixing, back to media tech and learning, and then follow it out um, and wrap everything up at the end of the second year with your digital portfolio. And that digital, digital portfolio is a six-credit course wherein you're building your own work uh, so that you can have that with you to show everybody what you can do and also to use it for, for the, the different skills that you won't even know you have, but you will have by the time you're done. So, and that, we figure that's a doable, and for some people, more doable schedule if one year doesn't work. Just a couple more people open it up for questions. Um, if you didn't get one of the pamphlets on your way in, make sure you get that because this information is detailed in that pamphlet as well. But you would apply just like you would to grad school uh, at any other place. Uh, official transcripts, resume, letters of recommendation, personal statement, all of those things are online. Uh, applying is free if you do it online. Can't imagine that you would want to do it any other way. Um, you would need a master's degree and either teaching certification, which you all have, or involvement in professional education or training. And we were just talking about how many more people are involved in some kind of teaching, uh, but not knowing how much they need to know about good pedagogy until they're actually in it. So in short, those are the uh, qualifications. At the moment, I think we have, I don't know if we have a GPA limit. Um, in our application materials. I don't think we do at this point because this is a new program again. It's one of the places that we can say, hey, come on in, let's do this. Well, we're looking for the right person. I mean, this really yes. is, we're looking for, I mean, we've had people ask us, well, you know, I'm very tech savvy. Yes. I know everything under the sun. Oh, that's great. But then a lot of times people that don't feel like they're savvy with tech, you know, if they are a little apprehensive, we still want that person. To me, the, the biggest piece is the individual teacher dispositions. I, we want to work with people that are flexible, they want to learn, they're critical thinkers, you know, this is a new challenge. Um, you know, I, I've said this before, to me, the, the learning how to use the digital text or the tool, that's, that really is the easy part. The challenging part is, what does that mean for teaching and learning? What does that mean for your student learning objectives? How are you, if Suzanne was here, the one that we were picking on earlier, she would say, how is this making what's happening in your classroom better than what you were doing previously? 
that is the hard part. And we have a lot of good, healthy debates about whether or not sometimes digital tools do make it better. I'm sure you say mm -hmm. the same thing. As an English teacher, I love, you'd mentioned the smell of books. I can't wait for them to come up with an app that actually makes my, iPods, mm -hmm. uh, my iPad smell like a book. But I, I'm in heaven in this room, so. It's I'll coming. Was, uh, oh, don't tell me that. It's coming. Oh. <laughs> Uh, and what you, can you do with this degree? I'm sure you have lots of ideas as well. As I said before, this the sixth year, which you have to educate people on, I find, um, is equivalent to CAGS or to an EDS. For most school districts, it's an increase in pay. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there steps in between there? If so much like, no? So it's just this is the next pump? Okay. Um, also, given the, the, the breadth of what you were, your different roles are in the school, you can see already the number of things you could do. As if you would be one of the people to whom lots of other people would come. Uh, professional development for yourself, for colleagues, for RESCs. Curriculum development. Oh, the state changes. God knows what the state is, will do to us or with us next. Uh, regional and national opportunities. We hope you will join us in presenting things. This is really on the edge of what people are doing. We hope you will join us as colleagues at doing regional and national conferences. And also engaging in your own research. And it doesn't have to be, you know, we have stereotypes of people in labs doing research, but there's lots of stuff we can do together. And we would really like to have you as partners in doing some of this. And I'm sure there's a lot more that we haven't thought of. Uh, so I'll go back.